The current occupant of the White House thinks that raising taxes on the rich will solve the government's insatiable appetite for spending our money. But one of the world's wealthiest men disagrees and is publicly exposing Team Biden's latest scheme. Take a look. The war of words between Jeff Bezos and the White House escalated on Monday, with the two sparring over the Biden administration's handling of inflation and its plans to tax the rich. The latest round began when the Amazon CEO accused President Biden in a Friday tweet of misleading the public when Biden said that raising corporate taxes would help bring down inflation. That was followed by a weekend tweet in which the billionaire slammed Biden for, quote, trying to inject even more stimulus into an already overheated inflationary economy. On Monday, the White House hit back with an unusually personal jab, suggesting that Bezos was trying to protect his wealth and undermine labor unions. In a statement, White House spokesperson Andrew Bates said, quote, it doesn't require a huge leap to figure out why one of the wealthiest individuals on earth opposes an economic agenda for the middle class that cuts some of the biggest costs families face, fights inflation for the long haul, and adds to the historic deficit reduction the president is achieving by asking the richest taxpayers and corporations to pay their fair share. It's also unsurprising that this tweet comes after the president met with labor organizers, including Amazon employees. Bezos responded Monday by saying the administration was trying to distract from stimulus policies that stoked inflation, tweeting, quote, They understandably want to muddy the topic. They know inflation hurts the neediest the most. But unions aren't causing inflation and neither are wealthy people. The back and forth between the White House and one of the world's richest men comes after Biden attacked Amazon for paying too little in federal taxes and has shown support for workers seeking to unionize some of Amazon's employees. By the way, Amazon, here we come. Watch. Watch. Biden has been under growing pressure to stem inflation, which has risen to near 40-year highs, and some economists think that raising certain taxes could ease price pressures. But so far, the president's plan to make corporations and billionaires like Bezos pay more has fallen short of securing the necessary support in Congress. Joining us now, Republican strategist and host of the 13-Minute News Hour, Bobby Everly. Bobby, great to see you again. Yeah, it's good to be back. Thanks, Dana. You know, I, I feel a part of me is stuck in a little bit of a twilight zone when I find myself agreeing with Jeff Bezos out of all people, um, because it is true what he says. It's not the unions. It's not the wealthy people that are stoking inflation. In fact, it's Biden and his policies. Right. Yeah, I agree with you. It's kind of weird, right? You, you expect conservatives to be speaking out and bashing Biden. I do it all the time. I'm sure you're out there, too. But when you see someone like Jeff Bezos do it, you kind of, and when the Elon Musk started to do it, you kind of take notice, right? You say, well, what is he saying? And he's absolutely right. This whole idea that you raise corporate taxes and it's somehow going to lower inflation, it makes no sense. I mean, the, the Biden administration is just grasping. It's like they can't figure out what to do about anything. So they're going to either call someone a racist or blame the rich. That is their, their whole MO right now. But if you raise corporate taxes, I mean, look what's going to happen. Companies are going to raise prices. You're already in an inflationary economy, so that's even going to add to the trouble, or you're going to cut back on the workforce, cut back their hours, which means they have less buying power in an inflationary economy. So it's bad altogether, and the White House knows it. Yeah, and uh, I think the people know it too, and we're not yep. stupid. We know what's happening. We're awake. We're not woke, but we're awake. Um, uh, Bobby, another thing, you know, our workforce is shrinking. Obviously, that's due to the pandemic, uh, other reasons there as well. But money is super tight, and experts are predicting that we may soon enter a recession. And here's another thing. No one is hitting this point hard enough, but healthcare premiums are precipitously rising. When we mm -hmm. look at the second and third quarters of this year, that, those are double-digit increases. Yes, absolutely. I mean, we've already had one quarter of a, an economy that is shrinking. Throw in one more and we've got a full-blown recession. And that's ex exactly what Biden's economic policies are leading to. People aren't coming back to work. He talks about creating all of these jobs. Those are just jobs that were there to begin with in a roaring economy under former President Trump. Some are coming back, 
but others aren't. And that's the thing. People got comfortable, you know, getting the government paychecks and these stimulus bonuses, making more to stay home than they did going to work. It's no wonder some of them want to keep doing that. But the, the policies, again, whether it's border security, whether it's inflation, whether it's taxes, the Biden administration has failed on every single front. And that's why when it comes to November, they are going to be hit hard by a red wave. Indeed, they will. Can't wait for that moment. Oh, my gosh. I'm so excited that's for November. For sure. <laughs> exactly. It appears the lower income group also touching mm -hmm. on this and the very wealthy that they're not seeing increases in their health care costs. Again, hitting the middle class. They're expected to pay more in health insurance. Um, employers will be inevitably hit hard with increased costs as well. Uh, wages will certainly stagnate. How do you think employers will handle these increases? Do you think that they're going to eat it or pass it on to their employees? Well, I mean, we, we live in a market-driven economy, right? And so people exist. This is where the left always gets screwed up. They, they think that somehow a business owner exists to employ people. That is their motivation. I'm going to form a business just so I can hire folks. No, they're producing a good or a service. And if the costs of producing that go higher, they are going to make adjustments. That's just common sense. And what you're seeing now is a lot of the adjustments that have to be made because of the Biden economy hurt workers, hurt the American public, but it's driven by these policies and where, where no one is, Biden is asleep at the wheel and we see what's going on. But as inflation keeps going, and here's, here's the thing with Biden talking about people paying their fair share, look at the middle class and the so-called working families. They have gotten hit hard by the Biden tax increase, which is monumental inflation. Prices going up on food, groceries, other items, gasoline, that is hitting them harder than anybody. Also, I mean, does he forget that when, you know, these these mega billionaires too, like Jeff Bezos, a Tesla owner, CEO, uh, Elon Musk, um, these people that have these huge mega companies provide jobs for people. Uh, and there's a reason why the, the, they have tax breaks and stuff like that. Uh, but Biden doesn't yeah. seem to uh, be, be awake and uh, understand that. Uh, that billionaires actually provide jobs for people, which help our economy and boost our economic prosperity. He doesn't seem to understand that. Um, so again, a red wave is coming. Do you anticipate that Republicans will uh, take over the House and Senate? Do you also anticipate that they may target health care costs in the next two years? Well, I certainly hope so. I re remember the, the battle that former President Trump faced in these first two years. You know, the, the Republicans kept saying, hey, all we're missing, we're missing a crucial ingredient, and that's someone in the White House, and then we'll overturn Obamacare. And they kept putting these votes in, and, you know, it'd get vetoed, but all we need is the president. Well, guess what? Former President Trump came in and said, I'm your guy, I'll sign it, and then they didn't pass it. We need Republicans that are ready to push a conservative agenda so that when we win, and we will win big in November, that we actually get some stuff done. We'll need the key piece, 2024 presidency, but I think we'll take the House and the Senate. Things are looking really good to set down a foundation for 2024. Can't wait. My fingers are crossed. Bobby Everly, yep. thanks for coming on today. Great to have you on again and see you. Thanks, Dana. All right, friends, thanks again for tuning in. I really appreciate it. And before you go, please hit that subscribe button above. Once you do, tell your friends, share it, spread the word about the 13-minute news hour so we can keep growing. And for more great content, check out these videos right here, and I'll see you next time.